Hi, welcome to Hollywood Crime Scene. This is Rachel Fisher. Hi, this is Desi Jedekin. How's it going? I'm still here with my husky voice. It's so sexy. It's very sexy. Um, I probably do have walking pneumonia or bronchitis, but right. you know what? I just want to have this uh, Stevie Nicks thing going for as long as possible. It's so, so hot. Yeah. One of our listeners commented about how hot it I was. I saw that on the fan page. He was worried he'd get blocked no, for saying it. No, you'll never get blocked for that. No, I mean, I don't feel victimized. No. It is sexy. It is and even sexy. a gay guy thought it was sexy. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty, like the biggest that's compliment, all, the ultimate compliment for a straight woman to get if a gay guy right. said, I will fuck you. Right. I mean, he didn't say that. I'm putting words into his mouth. W would you <laughs> fuck Desi? Please comment. Please comment. We want to know. We wanna, we're going to put a poll up on our uh, if you're gay, Facebook fan If you're page. a gay man, would you fuck Desi? I mean, have you ever tried to fuck a gay guy? Here's the thing. I was in love with this guy, Nick in high school and we dated for a minute and he was just the coolest fucking guy. He was so cool. He did right. tons of acid. He was like super well, artsy. Yeah, he was a photographer. Cool. He was like a year older than me and I was in love with him. And one night we uh, got really drunk and he, we were about to have sex and he just goes, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> You're drunk. And I was like, oh, what? He's like, like, no, I want a hard yes consent. He was ahead of his time. <laughs> he was ahead of his time. And I was like, so like, I was like heartbroken because I'm like a drunk 16 year old. And I thought, oh, he's right. not into me. He doesn't like right, me. Right. Because a, a guy at that age to turn down sex is. I just was of, so right? confused, you know, and <clears throat> it wasn't until months later when he sat me down on his porch and he said, honey, I have to tell you something. I'm gay. <laughs> Um, I actually tried to have a sex with a gay guy as an adult and I knew he was gay and I mean he was out yeah but we were friends and we were really drunk and we, we tried to have sex and he was so soft and his like soft dick were was you guys slamming. laughing yeah we were fucking cracking up and I was like oh. literally almost peeing like not in a hot way because I was laughing so hard and his like soft dick was like hitting my thigh like that's a feeling I'll never forget <laughs> He's his soft, soft dick. dick hitting my He's... that's why I'm literally repulsed by soft dicks now I think because of that is when so, I see a soft that dick, moment. I, I just never want to see a soft dick. They're so gross to me. <laughs> right. Like we had to watch it last week. Oh, right. In the John, in Wayne, the John Bobbitt. Wayne Bobbitt yeah, episode. It's sort of like very disturbing to me for some reason. I couldn't, I could never have sex with someone who was like a platonic friend, let alone if they were, it doesn't matter if they were gay or straight. Like anyone who was, a, I mean, I don't drink either anymore, right. but like. Well, that helps. <laughs> that probably helped too. Yeah. I don't think we would have tried it. It wasn't even like we were necessarily horny. It was like, it, let's you, do it. It was so yeah. funny. It was just so I funny. I get it. I get so, it. So yeah. Anyways, that's my one experience. So Desi, did you watch the Golden Globes? <clears throat> Rachel, I do not watch award shows in general. But I do you not sure like have a lot them. to say about award shows. I do shows. have a lot to say about them. What I usually do is I will follow Twitter because I am obsessed with Twitter, obviously. And then I make jokes based on what everyone's talking about. Um, or if I see pictures or clips or hear something, and then I will tie it into a personal story about myself. That Desi, is my formula. You had a tweet that um, was very, uh, it blew up tonight. I had a minor blow up tweet. It was like a 100 or something. No, fakes. it was like 500. Oh, good for you. Shit, yeah, that fucking thing took off a bit. It like, was about Keith Urban. Uh, yeah, I said that Laura Urban, uh, and Laura Dern looked like shit, but it was Keith Urban. <laughs> Uh, that was a tweet that immediately got me groans, but it took off really fast. Like my friend Mike Drucker was like, Desi. <laughs> he faved it though. Come on. Yeah, he faved We're calling you. you out, Mike Everyone Drucker. Liked it. I think Mike I retweeted it like it. I retweeted it like two times also. I mean, that's how proud I was of that right. slam. Right. It's a good slam. It is a good slam. No offense to Laura Dern. No, I this think isn't she about is amazing. Laura Dern. This is about Keith Urban's hair. Keith Urban, come on. He's had this I mean, speaking of Hollywood crime scene. What the hell is up with Keith Urban's look still? Like, has he's, he changed that look since he became famous? I'm saying he's stuck in 2002 <clears throat> because that was a look in 2002. Like, every guy had that look. Right, right. That kind of, like... Pseudo, like, girly rocker. hair. His hair is, like, highlighted. It's highlighted. And, like, straightened. And he wears a lot of bronzer. It's just a really weird bad look it's also weird that he's in country music because that seems like a look that would not go over in country music he's also australian i know the whole thing is like fucking weird but i am really happy for him and nicole kidman just as a couple you are 
Yeah, because I think he really loves her, and I know that she really loves him, and he struggled with addiction before, oh, and she right. stood by him. And yeah, I feel, I mean, from the outside, they you like never know, like but other. they seem like they really like each other. And, and she had to be married to Tom Cruise. That's what I'm saying, is like she has her happy ending with Keith Urban. I'm very happy for Nicole Kidman, very happy about her win tonight for Big Little Lies, which if anyone hasn't seen that yet, go watch it. It's, it's really good. so good. I it's, liked it. Every everyone in that cast was phenomenal, right? And I'm a huge Reese Witherspoon fan. She's I thought she was the best. She in was it. my favorite, yeah. on the show. And it's not the most dramatic part, like the award winning part. But, but I actually she thought was she was so better. Good. Yeah, I actually thought she was better. Yeah, her acting was spectacular. It was a more interesting role, I think. She was very interesting, and I and Zoe Kravitz is great, and I love. She's so stunningly beautiful. It's like I like that Alexander Skarsgård. Oh, the bad guy? Yeah, yeah. He's really hot. He is hot. He's a dick, but he's hot. I, I was kind of into it before he was Before he got bad. <laughs> yeah, before I he was got like, abusive. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Well, that's like, good. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm kind of getting better. So I guess you know? that's a, seg a good segue for the topic of the Golden Globes. Right. So we're going to talk a bit about the Golden Globes tonight, since it is sort of Hollywood-esque. There was, was a lot of crime tie-ins, too. Yeah. So basically... Uh, the theme of the Golden Glo <gasps> Globes tonight, it was suggested that all the actresses dress in black in solidarity for victims of sexual abuse within the entertainment industry. And standing by and making a change. Making a change right. within the industry. So it was very, um, you know, at Desi and I talked about earlier how, you know, uh, oh, is this going to be an empty statement is an empty gesture because it's so superficial it's just okay you're making this visual statement it's essentially like a hashtag activism what are you actually doing to enact real change behind the scenes right. when no one's looking well we don't know yet what will happen we don't know yet but it was i felt when i watched the pre-show i love a good red carpet i really uh sort of was in awe seeing the lack of um colorful dresses on, right. on the carpet tonight it was interesting and there were some i mean there was a lot of really beautiful dresses right because black dresses are the best dresses I'm sorry i love a good black gown because that they were really picturing i mean they did make an effort to make interesting choices as far as like fabric and design there was a lot of really yeah there was I, a lot of you know different. there wasn't now that i think about it and maybe just because that wasn't where my focus was tonight because i will admit like a lot of my focus on award show is like i love seeing what people are wearing the men included i love seeing what people come up with when they have like way too much money. Right. I'm so into it. Even like uh, the, the one thing I don't like, I feel like there's less um, bad choices. There was less bad choices. Well, but in general though, in the past like 10 years, I feel You're like right. back in the day there used oh. to be like people making their own things. Well, and Demi like, Moore wore yeah, the bike the shorts. Demi Moore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I feel like there aren't like as many good bad choices, which I used to enjoy Me a too. ton. Or Cher um, would show up in something batshit. Right, or, or like the swan dress. I mean, I don't feel like there's anything like that ever. That's a good it's point. It's kind of like, now it's like, uh, I didn't like that flesh colored dress, but it wasn't like a total disaster. It's more like, I didn't yeah. care for it. Right. There isn't a, as many <clears throat> risks. And for what it's worth, I was one of the few people that was a really big fan of the Givenchy Bjork swan dress. I didn't mind it at all. I for Bjork, it, I felt like, who I cares? It's Bjork. It was like, yeah. for her. And it was so whimsical and stupid that I loved it. I just absolutely loved it. Um, so um, beyond the b black dresses, Right. There was a lot of stuff going on throughout the show. Yes, that was about talking about it, about the big elephant in the room. That's, you know, this isn't a new development. This is something that has been going on in Hollywood since the beginning of Hollywood, as we've talked about on the show before. Right. Um, but it's really come out into light, and a lot of women aren't af as afraid anymore <coughs> to tell the ugly truth uh, of the whole situation. So uh, the host of the show tonight was Seth Meyers, and a lot of people were ripping and, and cracking jokes about him being the host because it's like, oh, of course we have a white guy, right? But, but I thought he was fine. I, I have no problem. And he he went after Kevin Spacey and Harvey Weinstein. He did his right? job as an award show. I mean, this is an award show. At the end of the day, I mean, obviously, would I love to see a woman or anyone go up on stage and like absolutely? Do something fucking crazy? Yes, I would. Right. It was pretty tame. Uh, the show, there wasn't, you know, anything that I would consider really rocking the boat. Um, although there were some, like, nice 
things that were said. Yeah. Uh, I thought Seth did a fine job for what he was supposed to do for his job. Well, it's not his fault he got hired. It, it could have been a woman, but I didn't. I mean, whatever. It's not, whatever. It's not the biggest thing. I didn't, it, I didn't have like high hopes for the Golden Globes to be particularly like the onus of change. It's not like the award show that has the most gravitas normally. No, it's everyone like, gets drunk. This is like the drunken award show. It's the so, fun award yeah. show. I wonder if they'll continue it to like the Oscars. I think so. I, I hope so. I feel like so. it should be it something should be. that doesn't go away because that's what everyone's kind of expecting, I think. So yeah. it would be nice if it doesn't. And obviously there's the time, what is it, time out? Time's up. Time's up, sorry. Um, so that thing is like a little more active, proactive. I'd like to see what this <clears throat> uh, group, Time's Up, accomplishes what their goals are yeah you want to see something that's actually i want to uh, see changes. solid changes I that see are real like changes. whatever the equivalent of policy is you right. know what i mean like right and hiring practices etc right our rules of the workplace and that kind of stuff well it was there was a moment in the show where they went to best director and it was all male directors that were nominated which is not uncommon for there to be right. a huge... I mean, there's only been one female director who's ever won And it was an Barbara Oscar. Streisand. No, 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 no. Who a was... director, it was um, Kathleen Bigelow. No, we're ta I'm talking about the Golden Globes. Oh, the Golden Globe. I'm just talking in, like, in the Oscars, like right. the big one. So Kathleen Bigelow is the one female director to win Best Director. And at Oscars. And then Barbara Streisand's the one... She won at the Golden Globes? Yeah, for Yentl. Oh, okay. oh, she directed <laughs> Yentl. I didn't even know but that. But you know what? That's like not a deserving win. Come Sorry. on, it's Barbara. She deserves the world. I mean, I like Barbara, but come on. I, I'm just saying, like, that, that's the thing about the Golden Globes, though. People win those awards. You're right. That Boss would never Baby win. Was yeah, like, I mean, it's like, it's a crazy award show where people who wouldn't normally win, like, at a more serious award show can win at the Golden Globes. Right. I get what you're you know saying. What I mean? Yeah. I get what you're I mean, saying. I love Barbara Streisand. Yeah. I'm not that big But it is still insane that even at that kind of award show, whatever, it's like, I mean, and the reality is, is like there, are, we don't let a lot of, like, we don't celebrate female directors. Right. I think the problem is, and there, there were a few female directors that could have been nominated. Like Patty Jenkins for Wonder Woman? Uh, I mean, that's I questionable to me. Well, I didn't see Wonder Woman. I but, did. It's not that great, in my opinion. But people really it's liked fine. it. It's oh, fine. No, I mean, at the Golden Globes, though, yeah, sure. That's what like, I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But I would say, like, the more across the board would be Greta Gerwig. Uh, I was surprised that she wasn't nominated. and I, Like, she's being nominated for all the other, you know, awards or Critics' of cho Choice kind of things. But not the Golden Globes. Yeah, it, so that one seems to me like an egregious It was snub. egregious. Yeah. It was egregious because it was all these men who were nominated, and then she came up on stage to present something yeah. immediately after. Right. So it did feel like an odd snub. I still haven't seen Lady Bird yet. I'm not even... I don't. I haven't seen Lady Bird either. I'm yeah. just saying, based on who's getting nominated for all the other things, right? She's sort of in that pack normally, right? So that was more of a snub, I think, than even Patty Jenkins, who I don't right. think is uh, sort of in the running and other th other things. So, but anyways, and so I think you didn't get to your point that Natalie Portman. Did Did you say that? No, you want to. You I say guess, it because okay. you actually saw it. So I actually was uh, <laughs> talking in the middle of that, and then I just saw it on Twitter what had happened. So Natalie Portman was in charge of announcing the best nominees director. for Best Director, and she um, she basically said, and here are the nominees for uh, Best Director. Or here are the male nominees. That's what she said. Here are all the male. Like the all-male nominees. The all-male nominees. So she, you know. She kind of called it she out. She threw some shade that uh, they had only nominated male directors, and... And I, when she said, when I found out she said that, I was like, oh my God, were there no like female directors like who did big movies this year? And then when Greta Gerwig came on stage, I'm like, oh my God, like she directed Lady Bird. Right. Which was so critically lauded. It's like one lauded. of the most, yeah, talked about movies of the year. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> Cersei, I'm probably saying her name wrong, but uh, Cersei Ronan, yeah. who is the star of Lady Bird, I haven't seen Lady Bird yet, but I just love. I just been enjoying watching her like since I like her. Atonement. Yeah, I'm really happy for her just as an actress, and Definitely. she looked really beautiful tonight. She's cute. She's so cute. I really. I'm rooting for her. Um, the other thing I want to talk about uh, about the Golden Globes that our girl Tanya Harding was at the show. Right. 
she was there and wearing a black dress. She was, I believe, Margot Robbie's guest. Possibly, Maybe, possibly. Sure. I know she's been Margot's guest, at, guest in the past. She was at, at the, I think, the premiere. Right. Um, I don't know if she was her guest, but. I just saw I, Tanya last <clears> night. <throat> um, and I had, uh, hadn't, had you know, it, like you'd think I would have been the first in line to go see it. But I like hold Tanya in such, like I just am so, was so obsessed with that story. I was like so nervous about seeing the movie in case I didn't like right. it and they didn't do her justice. But I personally really, I've, I'm a huge fan of Margot Robbie and I thought that she was fantastic. And I really thought she was going to win the Golden Globe for Best Actress tonight. But really? I again, I haven't seen Lady Bird. Well, I also saw I, Tanya. And we have a differing opinion on this, <laughs> according to your tweet. Uh, it is not a good movie for me at all. I'm so surprised. I find it to be so condescending and camping it up and like playing the camp up and sort of, I don't feel like they held Tanya in high regard. I think they thought it was funny and they think of her and her family as a joke. That's how I saw it. Wow. Uh, that's, I mean, that's an opinion. I'm not, I know you're not alone in that. I also feel like I wasn't surprised to find out it was an Australian, or the director was not American. I felt like it was someone coming in and not really getting it. It also could be that I had seen the 30 for 30 documentary that this movie is really cribbed off of. It is. And the documentary, it's like, why do I need this movie? The documentary is all of that, but real. Do you know what right. I mean? Like, so seeing that, because I talked to you about Tanya Harding's mom that's yeah. played by Allison Janney. Who was amazing. <clears throat> Come on. I like Allison Janney. I thought Margot Robbie was terrible and that was like a really bad miscasting. I don't Well, have it should a, have been me. We I don't have an that. opinion on her as an actress. I, I'm not like a fan or I haven't yeah. seen anything she's in. I just don't like that casting. She was way too old for me to be playing Tanya at that age. I, I don't know. Like, I just, uh, if it was someone older, I would have liked to see like maybe Amy Adams. Or someone who really got like that kind of like I think Amy Adams does that kind of character pretty well and kind of gets it. I don't know. I didn't like it. I loved it. I loved it and I love uh, listen, I'm also coming to this where I would when I heard first heard of the movie, I wanna love this movie. And right. obviously I'm a Tanya Stan and it's hard I'm obsessed when you with have her. such high hopes and expectations. I just feel like honestly, like I could have written a better Tanya Harding movie. I don't doubt Do that. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I just don't feel like there's that. something like uh like I just wanted it to be better i get it, I get it. uh anyways but it was nice i was see. watching with a friend who also wasn't into it uh and he in fact he was so disgusted when she peed at the beginning well that <laughs> he was what? like if she pees i'm turning this off and then and she I was like pees. i was like she's gonna pee like you know she's gonna pee. yeah <laughs> like, that line was a setup for her to take a piss on the ice <laughs> but i could see his point where it was just kind of like oh come on like right you know what i mean like right i don't know like I also didn't really like the testimonial scenes. I felt like they weren't like great. You know where they were yeah, like. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I know, know what you're saying. I get it. But I really like. So there's two yeah. points of view. See the movie. Yell at us Desi, online. Like, Desi and I have a disagreement about this one. We'll get over and it. And we'll, mommy and mommy We are both not love fucking Tanya Harding. Right, and that's all that that's matters. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Right. Cause neither one of us look like a Nancy Kerrigan. We're not Team Kerrigan here. No, if so she was, it. then we wouldn't be friends. Probably. No, there's no way. There's no way I could be friends with anyone Team Kerrigan. But Sorry. <laughs> I am happy to see that Tanya is getting a redemption story because she deserves it. And, you know. We had a few funny interactions too with Twitter. Like I saw some person complaining that she was there on a night where we were um, standing up for victims of abuse when Tanya Harding had assaulted a woman, which isn't true. Which isn't true. <laughs> but it was just like, that's your take? Like, right. And I was like, I'd like to see all your your like hot takes where you're like, I'm mad Gary Oldman is here. I'm mad like or Chris Brown is dead. It's like, where's all your like right anti male abusers, like, right? Who didn't sexually assault someone maybe, but have beat up their wife or girlfriend or right. hit someone or was violent, like whatever, whatever. Francis won for three billboards, and I was very happy about that because. I think she's amazing. Yeah, I love her. I love her. I didn't her. see the movie, but I am seeing it this week. Please. So I'll give you a hot take. <laughs> I need my hot... No, I want a hot take specifically on Brendan's I also saw The the Post, and that's a terrible movie as Whoa. well. Whoa. Thank you. <laughs> well, Desi went, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I hate everything. I'm that person now. <laughs> wow. It's so bad that I actually was like, how did this get movie get made? And I, I said to myself, is is Tom Hanks a good actor? Whoa. You said listen, that to yourself? Listen, I will tell you, I'm a huge fan of a movie, All the President's Men, 
which is also about the Washington Post. Uh, and I'm like especially uh, a huge fan of um, Jason Robards Jr. as Ben Bradley. I have like a huge sexual attraction to this character. And to see someone that hot then be played by like Tom Hanks, who is just not sexy or hot. I'm sorry. I think he's a very nice person, but I don't want to fuck him. It was like a bad, it was yeah. like watching a sketch. It was like watching sketch acting that never was funny. Right. And like everyone was talking like they were from the 1940s, even though right. this movie is set in the 70s. I don't know. We're getting off track with movie reviews now. This isn't movie corner. It's um, Hollywood crime scene, but the post is a crime. It's a movie crime. Um, did you have anything else to say about the Golden Globes? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Um, that's it. <clears throat> so should we get into our, our, our crime? Let's get story? into our main okay. story. Let's get into our main story. Um, gather it, gather up children. <laughs> <laughs> Pull your chairs up around the fireplace. Ooh, I'm, let's get cozy. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. So today we're going to talk about, uh, we've had like a bunch of murder and kind of heavy things lately. So yeah. I thought I would like lighten it up a bit. Let's lighten it up. Let's lighten it up with a little um, story about Hugh Grant and Divine Brown. Um, do you know about the story, Rachel? I do know about the okay. story. Um, so, I mean, we all know Hugh Grant is still a pretty big movie star. Yeah. Um, he kind of uh, started making a name for himself in the early 90s. He was uh, in a lot of British films and was sort of an up and coming British actor. Romantic at the time. comedy dude. Um, and he finally got his really big break in a movie called Four Weddings and a Funeral. Did you see that movie? Yeah, it was really boring. Uh, anyways, that movie was a huge success and it was a British film that was a big hit in um, America. Yeah. So that was kind of like where America first kind of fell in love with Hugh Grant. Um, he really became a star over here and he was definitely like this, like, seen as now this up and coming charming leading man like he was very like he had that smile and like the floppy hair and like do you know what i mean right. like no i just, get it he was cute he wasn't <clears throat> cute to me but i get it and he was charming and he British. had this like charming british and bumbly thing. he's like oh oh, oh I, I, yeah oh dear oh dear yeah. and he was kind of like not threatening non-threatening do you know what i mean like right um i will say that the best hugh grant movie ever please don't out reply me on this but the best hugh grant movie is uh nine and nine months oh my god I get to this with you're gonna get to that <laughs> right yeah okay but that's the best hugh grant movie okay. please don't at me okay i will not at you um he was also sort of uh he made a scene at the time because he had a really hot girlfriend, Elizabeth Hurley. And she wore the Versace she dress. She wore the Versace dress with the um, safety huge pins. safety pins at like, I can't remember what premiere. Maybe it was Four Weddings and a Funeral premiere. It was some big red carpet. <clears throat> yeah. So they kind of became this like little it couple. Yeah. And she was British. She was British. And I don't know if she was at the time, but she um, eventually became a model for Versace. Mm -hmm. Right? Um or she was a model for like Estee Lauder. Actually. She still, I think, does Estee Lauder. Yeah, uh, but she was an actress, but she wasn't really famous for acting. She I think really, she kind of got more famous for acting later. That but was she was her never moment. a big. That, yeah, was her that was her coming big out moment. party. So after the success of um, Four Weddings and a Funeral in 1994, Hugh Grant landed a two-year deal with Castle Rock um, Productions. Uh, so he's like well on his way to success as an American film star. His first film with Castle Rock was the movie Nine Months that Rachel mentioned. Thank God we're going to talk uh, about it. We'll talk about it a little bit, but uh, yeah. Um, and it was while he was out promoting the, the upcoming release of Nine Months that Hugh had his fateful, fateful meeting with Divine Brown. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to give you a little background on Divine Brown, which is an I, I honestly am just like thrilled that she had the fucking balls to pick divine as her her name it's a great name yeah i mean because i would never want to step into divine shoes like not divine brown but divine <laughs> like, right right anyways she was not born divine brown she was born estella marie thompson she grew up very poor in um the eastern part of oakland so she's she's from the bay area bay area represent um, she had a single mom and she was one of six children and that's a fucking rough road to have yeah. six kids by yourself she herself became a young mom of two girls and it was um at the point where she couldn't pay a 133 dollar electric bill that um estella turned to a life of prostitution 
Uh, she used to work at Union Square in San Francisco, and she actually was quite successful. She would earn like a thousand dollars in five hours, which yeah. I guess isn't like high class, like like high end call girl type stuff. But that's a that's lot of money good. for five hours, that's right? Pretty good. Uh, according to Divine, this is a quote. I just wanted the best for my children and I didn't want them to struggle as hard as I had. So I did what I had to do. I wanted to make money, you know, do the right thing, go home and raise my children and just have a good life, a good, quiet, positive life. Okay. I can respect that. You got to take care of your kids. Hey, and I'm a big <clears throat> sex work advocate over right, here. Of course. I think it should be legalized and unionized. Oh, totally. Absolutely. Um, on, so on June 27th, 1995, Grant was arrested in Los Angeles, California in a police vice operation that was off of Sunset Boulevard for receiving oral sex in a public place by Miss Divine Brown. Thompson was performing, or Brown, Divine Brown, was performing oral sex on the actor in his car at the time, and he was flashing the lights of his BMW at her to get her in the car. So they were, he was creating quite a stir, yeah. considering there was like cops sort of on patrol right. in this particular area. So she had him go to a side street to meet up with him. Divine Brown's charge for going to the hotel room was $100, but Grant only had $60 on him. What? <laughs> so that's, on. that's why she agreed to, to suck his dick in the car. Like, that's how the car thing happened. He didn't have enough money to go to the hotel with her. Um, according to Divine Brown... The attention of the policeman had already been alerted by the, the brake pressing that he was doing with the BMW. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of what I said before, what caused them to kind of pick up on these two. Right. Now, she kind of gave a little bit more information a few years ago on the incident. She was interviewed by the Daily Mail, which is kind of like a trashy British, British rag. rag. Yeah. Um, in it, she said that um, Hugh called her Cherry Red during the time they were together in the car. Cherry red. Cherry red. She said, this is a quote, the other night I was thinking, I wonder if he thinks about that night. I know he loved it. He kept calling me cherry red because my lips were red. My shoes and clothes were red. Even my underwear was red. <laughs> he kept complimenting me on my lips and my feet. I guess he has a foot fetish too. <laughs> Sorry. Um, she uh, went on to say, uh, she talked more about the police officer circling in his, uh, wait, was a police officer as he circled his white, so Hugh Grant was in a white BMW and his baseball cap was kind of pulled down his face as he was circling this area yeah. where, uh, you know, sex workers are kind of hanging out to pick up right. tricks or whatever. Wait, was this in LA? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and then she said, I was running from him. I thought he was a cop. He kept circling the block and pulling up in front of me. There were a lot of beautiful girls out there that night, but he just wanted me. Eventually, I built up enough courage to confront him. I said, I'm going to call the cops if you keep stalking me. He said, I want you. I'm sorry. Can you please do it in Hugh Grant's voice, Desi? I don't know how to do it. Like, how do you do it? I want you. I don't know how to. Say, I don't know how to do an English accent. I want you. I'm gonna just sound like Oliver. Uh, uh, may I beg your may pardon? May I please have some more? May, may, I, may I please have your mouth I on my you. cock? I, I want you. I want. you please I... suck my cock? <laughs> please, sir. Please suck my cock. I mean, she's a woman. Please, ma please, madam. Madam. Please, madam. Would please, you please suck my cock? Please suck my Johnson. Please drain my Johnson of all the jizz. <laughs> I don't know totally what I'm doing. What he yeah, said. exactly what he said. She cleaned it up to "I want you." I love, I love quote things. I love people describing um, dialogue that someone is saying to them when it's something like this. You're so beautiful. <laughs> What's a beautiful girl like you doing on the street? He sounded a bit like Prince Charles, but tried to cover up his accent. This is a quote from Divine Brown. Amazing. I love that she's like he was telling me I was beautiful and I was too beautiful to be on the street. Also, I love that her one British reference is Prince Charles. <laughs> like. Who's like so gross? Yeah, he sounded like Prince Charles because I mean I'm I'm well aware of what Prince Charles sounds like. Aren't you, Rachel? I have no idea. <laughs> um, she said she could tell when he was up close that he was a gorgeous guy. He kept talking about how pretty I was and how he was struck by my lips and feet. <laughs> I said, "You've got all these other women here. Why choose me?" He told me he was looking for a beautiful black woman. <laughs> this is also corny. I mean, this is either true or Divine Brown is like the worst screenwriter ever. Uh, she got into his car. I believe Hugh Grant was this corny. I think so too. I like really I could do. picture him thinking that's a compliment. I want a beautiful black woman. Like. 
like that wouldn't be insulting to someone like, oh, I'm not your fucking fetish. Right. Like I'm a human being. <laughs> like, right. Do you know what I mean? Um, she got into his car and they were together about 20 minutes before they were interrupted by a tap on the window. Two police officers on patrol had been alerted to the brake lights that kept going off and on. He kept pushing his foot on the brake, she said. He kept going, he kept saying, oh, cherry red, cherry red. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is so overwrought. She uh, went on to say, then we got that knock on the window. The guy put his flashlight down on my head. I looked up, Hugh looked up and said, oh shit. <laughs> We both thought it was somebody just knocking on the window. Then a police officer said, please step out of the car. <laughs> um, she actually did not know who he was until the arrest happened. Uh, and reporters kind of came to her house the day after the arrest. Wow. So she had no idea it was like a movie star yeah. that she's sucking off. You know, like, I mean, he had a BMW, so she probably thought he was rich. Yeah. But maybe that's a very common, like, rich guys going there and just fucking getting a blowjob or whatever, right? I have no idea. So uh, Hugh Grant was charged. I, I think both of them were charged with lewd, contest, lewd conduct. She pleaded no contest in uh, 1995. In addition to that, she was ordered to attend AIDS class and AIDS um, class. Yeah, I have no idea what AIDS class is. I mean, do you want to riff on what AIDS class might be? Jesus. I'm assuming it's a class about safe sex and being a sex worker. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't know what AIDS class is. I don't know what AIDS class is, but it's quite a it's quite a name. term, right? Uh she was also um sentenced to perform five days of community service, find um a thousand uh, eleven hundred and fifty dollars for parole violations. I assume she had some kind of police record and she was actually sentenced to 180 days in jail. Are you serious? Yeah. Hugh Grant pleaded no contest also was fined $1,180. He was on two years probation and he also was ordered to complete an AIDS education program or an AIDS class. I find that to be fucking bullshit. It is bullshit. <clears throat> that she would go to jail and he wouldn't. It's fucking garbage. I mean, it's the same crime. It's he it is literally it. the same crime. He bought it. They're both doing it. Right. But that is just one of the fucked up things about sex work where the John they don't ever get in trouble. pays the fucking price criminally. But the sex worker. I mean, worker... obviously the pimp will, but just the regular people who are basically making that business exist by their, you know. They're the, they're the demand for right. it. Right. <clears throat> it's bullshit. It's total bullshit. And, and. It... Look, it's bullshit. I'm not going to get on my soapbox about why we have to protect sex workers, but this is just one, here's one example. Uh, here's one tiny example of the many examples. <clears throat> I mean, it's very possible she got jail time because she had other arrests and it was related to parole, parole violations. But all of those were also sex work crimes, probably. Right. Like, so, yeah, I mean, it's ultimately, it's up. still bullshit. <clears throat> now, as I said before, he was in L.A., uh, promoting his movie nine months which was his first major studio film to be released uh he was on the talk show circuit and uh coincidentally enough he was booked for the tonight show with jay leno that same week oh, that he was arrested and this is a pretty big moment like i distinctly remember him going on this show because he yeah. didn't cancel like a lot of people thought he wasn't going to show up um, so he goes on the show to promote this I mean, thing. can you imagine it's Jay Leno of all people? He has just like the worst jokes. Right. And Jay Leno probably already did like dancing Edo level comedy jokes about right. Hugh Grant being busted. Right. Right. Um, so this interview actually has been widely credited with sort of making Jay Leno's show really take off because it was very highly rated. Like people tuned in to watch, uh, Hugh Grant's interview. Yeah. Um, Hugh Grant, like to his credit, didn't go on and make any excuses. Right. Like he owned up to it right away. Um, Jay Leno famously asked him, what the hell were you thinking? I right. think that was like his opening question. And Grant answered, I think, you know, in life, what's a good thing to do and what's a bad thing. And I did a bad thing. And there you have it. Right. I mean, that was, I'm glad that he had, ad you know, I don't think it was a bad thing, but I'm glad he admitted it. Well, I mean, the bad thing beyond the sex work 
aspect of it was he did have a serious girlfriend at the time. Oh, well, he and he cheated, cheated yeah. on her in a really humiliating fashion because it was so because it was so public. I mean, not that it was a sex worker. It was so public, but it was so public. It, right. If it was his nanny or his coworker or whatever, it would have been a humiliating yeah. thing to have your boyfriend. Everyone know your right. boyfriend I, fucked. I agree. Yeah. That is fucked up to cheat on your <clears throat> significant other. Um, and it, yeah, uh, but he di- but I do remember that he did really. He came off really well, and it. it actually kind of made him more popular, probably in Pro- a way. I mean, he still has. He had a very successful. He career. didn't lose anything from this incident, and no. I think part of it was his reaction. And people didn't really know him that well at right. the time, so it wasn't the biggest scandal. It where was a it pretty big been. scandal, I think, only because. Back then, you have to remember, we hadn't seen all these sex tapes and celebrity sex tapes and like right. nude photos and da da da. So, this was like pretty titillating, I think, story. Well, at the and there's time. the famous mugshot of him. Right, the mugshot. He looks really very Hugh Grant. So, <clears throat> we'll post it. So, Hugh Grant. Um, he, anyways, I think the reason it also took off was he did have this good guy, sheepish kind of persona. So it was also the contrast right. of like that the little image that we did know about him right. from Four Weddings and a Funeral contrasted with that, I think also made the story a little bit more. He wasn't a seedy guy. Um, he I, Here's another quote from him. It was entirely to be expected that there would be a big hullabaloo about that, particularly given um, this rather absurd persona that I had been given about who I was on the back of Four Weddings and a Funeral. People thought I was this nice character I played in the film. And so I suppose the contrast between that person and this seedy behavior was juicy stuff. And I quite understand why it was a big story. So I think all in all, he kind of handled it and accepted the reality right. that he did it. Right. I mean, he owned up he to it. He did it. Uh, Elizabeth Hurley refused to comment initially. Uh, and then I think two months after he was arrested, she finally did release a statement. Uh, she said that she felt like she had been shot upon hearing the news that he was arrested with a sex worker. Well, that's kind of the feeling you have when your spouse or your partner cheats on you. Right. Right. Like, I mean. Well, and it's also one of those things that proves like people are always like, oh, I'd never cheat on that hot woman. It's like, you know what? Like, that's not what it's about. That's not what it's about. Like, uh, it's not the person is not responsible for the man cheating. Like, right. That's their own. That's it doesn't matter shit. if you're with the hottest woman in the world. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, right. it's such a irritating or they'll always be like, she's less hot than her. It's like, well, that's not how it's work. You don't have Elizabeth. Hurley. And also like, don't pick girls against each other with their right. Looks. It's like, disgusting. Shut up. It's also it's like it's also you know, just whittling us down to our looks that that's right. all we're good for. It's like, right. well, maybe that other woman's really interesting and fucking fun and cool. Like, right. I have no idea. Elizabeth Hurley could be fucking bitch. Like, I, I have no idea. Like, there's more to us than our looks. Like, right. they might not get along as well as we thought. Like, I have no idea. Um, anyways, they did uh, stay together quite a long time after that incident and, and uh, finally broke up in 2000, which was about five years after the incident and yeah. uh, after 13 years of being together. They were together a long time. Right. Although there are rumors right now that they are fucking again, Ooh. by the way, that I, I saw. But I didn't see any like serious pictures or anything, just kind of yeah. rumors that they've been seen together, et right. cetera. But they did remain friends. The movie, by the way, that you love, Nine Months Totally Bombed and was a critical disaster. I can't believe it because, okay, look, I saw that movie in the theater and I was a huge Joan Cusack fan already from seeing her for the first time in Adam's Family Values just a couple years prior. So I was already on board. Because right. I mean, I like Julianne Moore too. I don't think I ever saw the movie, but I, I think I read a little bit about it. And he in the movie, he plays um, a guy who's very he's scared upset about, about his girlfriend getting pregnant yeah. and becoming a father he's scared about it so i wonder like after the scandal if people were like not in the mood to see him maybe that's that why the part of the movie tanked but right. i i saw it and i i haven't seen it since i saw it in the theater but i remember liking it at the time i mean i probably saw it a couple times after that on vhs but like like when i was young but i remember thinking it was the funniest fucking shit ever I'd be I, very curious to watch I it now. I haven't seen a um, ton of Hugh Grant movies, but I did like, he had like a little run of romantic comedies. Was he in Bridget Jones' Diary? Maybe. I think I liked He that. was in like Notting Hill, wasn't he? Oh, Notting Hill, I didn't see. I didn't but I see also, that. I thought he was 
fine in uh, Love Actually. Everyone loves that movie. I haven't seen it yet. I don't love that movie. It's fine. But he's his storyline is cute, and I like yeah. him in it. And then I think I also saw him in About a Boy, which right. I liked. He was in that. Uh, also. I mean, he's fine. I he's nothing, fine. I have, I have nothing, nothing against, against him. him. Anyways, uh, more importantly, where is Divine Brown exactly. now? Exactly. That's is like, what I want to know. This is the majority of my story, of my reporting that I did, <laughs> was to find out what she's up to. Good. Uh, Divine calls the incident as the trick that changed her life, which I feel like is an awesome way to look at it and describe it. Yeah. She, uh, this is like pretty funny quotes here. So this is quotes from Divine Brown. Uh, <clears throat> she actually goes by her uh, birth name now, Stella. Uh, that film Pretty Woman seemed to be what my life was about. Hugh Grant was my Richard Gere, but I began to change too. I began to grow. I began to realize I was nothing more than a one-night trick, not a celebrity. That might have been the best-paying sex act in the world, but real life doesn't usually turn out like a Pretty Woman film. He could have been a mad maniac instead of Hugh Grant. Right. <laughs> um, uh, so Stella Thompson, that's her birth name. She goes by Stella. I think her birth name was really uh, Estella, but she's use Estella. Uh, she was reported to have earned a total of $1.6 million um, from the publicity related to her no arrest way. with Hugh Grant. Um, her and her um, father of her children at the time, and this guy was also her manager and her partner, of course, right? His name was Alvin C. Gangsta Brown. He was known by Gangsta. Uh, they bought a four-bedroom home in Beverly Hills and, and, and kind of took that uh, money they made and made more money. Fuck yes. She earned uh, money from interviews. She had endorsements. Uh, and she also says, you know, that uh, money she earned from that, you know, thing with Hugh Grant helped her put her daughters through private school. This is the real Cinderella story. Yeah. Uh, she's quoted as saying, everything worked out for the better. It helped me turn into my life into something positive. I was blessed that it could get me out of that lifestyle. So it got her out of that lifestyle that she was, she, you know, doing what she had to do, but she wasn't happy. She wasn't happy. Um, in a 2003 Times interview, uh, someone asked Hugh Grant um, about his encounter with um, Thompson, like looking back, you know, uh, and he said, I think ultimately the pros and cons about evened out, actually. I remember saying to my agent the night of the event, I was very drunk. Is this bad for my career? He was a very Hollywood guy for whom everything is fantastic. And even he had to say, oh, it's not great. But on the other hand, there were odd things coming out of it that were quite positive in a way. So I have to say, in all honesty, I think it was kind of neutral. Well, that's for him. But for Divine Brown, it actually was really great. Yeah. In 2007, um, Thompson separated from Gangsta Brown. Uh, they're still friends, and she has a new fiance now, and they're pursuing some kind of music production company. Right. Um, some other interesting things she did after the arrest she was on the Howard Stern show a bunch. Oh, really? And I actually think I remember her on that. She was also on Danny Bonaducci's. He had a show at some point called Danny Exclamation Point. <laughs> was it on VH1? I think it might have been like whatever, like UPN or something when UPN existed. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, she was like in television commercials, like promoting local radio stations. She did commercials in Brazil for a lingerie company. She did um, soft core, like porn, like semi-nude photos mm -hmm. for um, a magazine. Um she was presenter for a UK porn channel. Um, <clears throat> she also paid her, played herself in an X-rated docudrama based on the incident called Sunset and Divine, The British Experience, and that was also directed by our friend Ron Jeremy. Okay. <laughs> um, my favorite little tidbit is that she um, appeared in Joey Buttafuoco's public access television show in 1998 oh, i did not even know my god that i didn't had know he thing. had that she was also on judge judy in 1999 and she was on a danish documentary series in 2005 i have no idea what that show is it's a documentary series in a danish documentary series she was also the subject of the biopic million dollar hooker and was on hollywood lives and ita ITV television series in 2007. So she did really well for herself. She did really well. And you well. know what's kind of great about her, I think? Even though she did all this publicity and did these things that are sort of whatever, C-list level shows, 
I feel like she was never oversaturating the market. Like no. some of these people who get this 15 minutes of fame, you see them everywhere. They're, irritating. They're so fucking irritating. I feel like she quietly did all this shit, right. got her fucking money and like made a life for herself with that money and right. made even more money off of the money she earned. She's inspiring. I'm inspired. She's kind of inspiring, I'm right? Pretty like inspired. She kind of took that $50 blow job. <laughs> I mean, that's every girl's dream. Sorry. You take the $50 blow job and you work it and make but a talk career. About, like, having this little like stroke of luck. No, <laughs> no pun intended, but seriously. And she fucking made all of this right. out of this one little fucking incident. Like, I mean, it's kind of crazy how well she did because so many like people in that situation just fucking, I've never had that much success with a blowjob. <laughs> I mean, like, seriously. seriously, I was just thinking, I'm like, the best I, I've done is like swallow every drop without having any leak down my chin. Which is a talent, but it's Look, not going to get you millions of dollars. I got no dollars. money for it. I don't, maybe I got like a fucking burger. <laughs> I'm no divine brown. How good was the burger, though? Really? Seriously, I love a burger. I do too. I look. I I've seen I've seen things where people are like, my stepsister fucked a guy for a cheeseburger, and I'm like, I seriously, it's better than not getting the cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what you're complaining about. Whenever I see those like um, headlines <clears throat> from like Maury and stuff, right? It's fucking like, for cheeseburger or like, like chicken McNuggets. I'm like, a, I've done that in my youth, and B, so what? Well, we're all technically fucking for food i'm just kidding <laughs> like i don't i honestly don't see why that's a slam right the only thing i can say is like did you think she should have gotten like a like a full meal like not just the cheeseburger like what's the slam here like uh, just let people fuck for what they you should fuck. fuck you can fuck for nothing if you get a cheeseburger that's like a fucking bonus it is a bonus yeah i mean come on like i mean it's sad if people don't have money and they have to do it for fucking food right but like i'm if saying you're just, like, willingly if you're people, willing like people, sure i'll fuck you give me a cheeseburger first right. that's fucking business like, that's business and and divine brown is like i'm honestly shocked she's not like written a book <laughs> Maybe she has and I didn't see it. But we need like, to get her on the show. She is like great. I mean, I was. So they both kind of handled this incident like surprisingly well, right? I mean, I mean, I was really um, worried I was going to be bummed <clears throat> out by this story just because I assumed that she had that she would have ended up went and... back on the streets, still been poor, struggling while he goes on to continue to be a million dollar actor, right? Um, so yeah, that's the story. Um, there's like a lot I didn't know. This I didn't... is a really happy ending. I'm it really is a glad happy you ending. get a happy ending story. <laughs> it's a very happy ending. Yeah. Uh, and Divine or if, Stella. If you want to, if you want to come on the show, we'd love to have you <laughs> and pick your brain about how you did it. Cause we're just two girls over here trying to make money too. We're just two girls standing in front of a boy asking him to give us a lot of money for a blow job. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a line from Notting Hill. You guys, come on. I have references. Right. We're tying it all um, back in together. Did we thank our pat pat patrons? No. Let's uh, thank okay. Them. Um, well, first of all, we did meet our first patreon goal yay right? and that's pretty exciting thanks so to we'll frank. set another goal frank was the one who took us over he actually messaged us on our facebook fan fan page or group yeah. page um letting us know that he took us over and where's our fucking poll no he didn't say it that way <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're he's gonna, excited so we're gonna add we're gonna we will do the add poll, the I'm, poll. Gonna, I'm gonna create it tonight uh on our site so you guys will be hearing this on Monday, um, I don't know. So we'll look for, we'll make an announcement. I think we can send an announcement out on Patreon, right? I'm sure it'll for be an announcement. I'm sure yeah. people who are patrons will get the email announcement right. that there's a poll. Okay. But I'm going to set up a poll tonight. Uh, I will compile all this fan suggestions that we have gotten on our Facebook group about what Different our next topics. show should be. Yeah. And then you guys can vote throughout the week. And you guys will essentially get to pick what our next show is for the next week. Cool. You have to be a patron to vote in this. But you can do it at a dollar level. You can do it at a dollar level. Right. If you donate, if you're a patron for a dollar or more, you can participate in this poll. Right. And we appreciate every dollar. 
We do. So if you can only afford a dollar, do it. Right. I mean, and we appreciate all awesome. the all the non patrons too. Yeah. We, we just like it. anyone listens to the show at all. So thank um, you guys. And as we mentioned, we do have the Facebook group that's really fun. Yeah. So you can uh, join up that. That's free. And we talk about cases that we cover. We talk about other Hollywood related things. Episodes. And we're pretty active there. So like we talk to people about cases. We did the Lorena Bobbitt last week based yeah. on a fan suggestion. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <clears throat> um, let's thank these people though who did uh, uh, contribute to our Patreon page last week. Uh, Gray, thank you. Kate, John, Bernadette, Miles, Adrian, Emily. Um, we have Eric, Frank, as as for mentioned, Frank who took us over our first goal. Um, Tara. And today we had Brittany. So, and we have a message. Can we see what this message is? It's from Douglas. Yeah, let's he says, see it. reach your goal, but you're worth more, really. Thank you, Douglas. Thank you. We, we are agree. worth more. We're very worth it. Cool. I'm worth it. <laughs> what is that, L'Oreal? That's L'Oreal. Yeah. Oh, that's Andy McDowell, who yeah. was also in Four Weddings and a Funeral. Right. What the hell? Wow, it's all tied together. Look at this. I'm an insane person. Um, so, that's that. Yeah. Any other things to add, Rachel? Um, I I really enjoyed this episode. Yeah, it was a nice to have a light one because we're going to have some dark ones coming up. Yeah, I needed it. Yeah, so, so it was cool. a fun one. Uh, All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. I don't want no meat, I don't want no meat, just more taters.